Today it would be just Lisa. Today we're here with Lisa Parker, lovely Hello. artist for our lovely Nemesis Now items. So first of all, when did you start actually thinking art is what I want to do moving forward in my life? Like this is my passion, this is what I want. Well, it's always going to be art or working with animals. I don't, so I, if someone said to me, oh, you're going to have to draw buses for the rest of your life or airplanes, then I would choose to work with animals. So I've always wanted to work with animals or do art. And I used to, like, I was quite antisocial as a child. <laughs> when I was at playgroup, I would sit and draw in the corner when other kids were playing. So I was quite antisocial and I've always drawn. Yeah. But I've always drawn animals. So if I had to choose animals, working with animals or art, I would choose working with animals. But I'm lucky because so I can do both. Is this why animals feature heavily in all the artwork that you do then? Yeah, I actually did do a lot of landscape art in um, previously and I was actually known for drawing water yeah. and I used to do um, a lot of birds in um, situations as well mm -hmm. and I did water because water was quite difficult and like pushing yeah. myself and then when I started doing my licensing art I wanted to do um, animals that would allow me a lot of freedom mm -hmm. to draw what I wanted to do and I'm really into quite spooky art I love the Victorian era mm -hmm. And with a cat, I can put that in any scenario, whereas you can't really put a dog on a mantelpiece. No. And dogs have limitations, although I love dogs, um, obviously, um, my yeah. dogs always feature. I, I love what I can do with a cat. I can convey emotions in the cat, yeah. and I like to put a lot of kind of my um, emotions and my sort of campaign really yeah. in the art. You know, I'm very much like an environmentalist and mm -hmm. I have quite strong opinions on that. Yeah. And I'm able to put that in my art kind of a bit subtly so I can make something that's quite fun for people to, an artwork that people can have and it like enjoy. But if you want to look a bit further into it, I can put something else exactly. in it as well. That's so, yeah. I think one of my key things with your artwork, I want one of my favorites. This is like me personally, I love Spirits of Salem. Oh, thank you. Because I just love all the little things what you've put in there yeah. that you sort of notice. And it's like, first time you look at the artwork, you see the cat with the scut, brilliant. And then you just notice little things afterwards. Like, oh my goodness, I didn't know that was there. And the map underneath and all the different, like, newspaper clippings and things like that. Yeah. It's, it's a way of, like, getting, um, especially, um, I appreciate things like the suffragettes and yeah. what witches in the past or what people perceived as witches had to go through. Yeah, I, it's quite fun to put a bit of history into an artwork, but still make it enjoyable. It just, for me, a lot of the times if I'm doing an artwork, I, I feel like there's got to be a point to it because I'm sitting there for hours and hours and hours and we've got limited time on this planet. Mm -hmm. If I can get a point across whilst I'm doing a nice artwork, that's kind of a bit extra special. What three words would you use to describe yourself? Okay, I would definitely say I'm down to earth. Mm -hmm. um, you don't often see me with brushed hair. Hardly ever any makeup. If it's like Andrew gets lucky, if it, if I brush my hair, that'd be date night. <laughs> and then makeup is like the extra special thing that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I've real, I've been out shopping before and had people look at me in the shop and realise I haven't actually looked in the mirror today. I've no idea if I've got toothpaste all down my face. I just don't care. I really don't care. I'm honest. I do pride mm. myself on being honest. And um, yeah, probably massive animal lover. Who would be that influential person in your life? I would say massively my nan. She she did pass away in November. Um, but my nan, I was so lucky to have someone like her in my life because she's like, almost like Yoda, the great sage. She <laughs> was so bright, so intelligent. And she, well, she, I only have ever heard her say something badly about someone just once in my entire oh my life. And she was telling me about this woman that wasn't that nice to her. I went, oh my God, she must have been a complete bitch if she's... <laughs> if you said something, and she yeah. sort of laughed and said, oh yes, she wasn't very nice. But my nan was always so nice about everyone. Yeah. And if you ever said, oh my nan, I've got a bit of a problem with her. And she'd go, well, you know, um, people that speak, um, so sort of people that gossip with you, gossip of you. And you're like, oh yeah. yeah. She'd say things like that all the time, like, just saying, she'd always, if she was, if she wanted me to go in and think about something, she'd say things and sayings. But my nan would, like lots of the um, poems we've put on the um, witchcraft things, mm -hmm. my nan worked with me on those. If someone wrote a biography about you, what would the title be? I don't know, maybe unexpected? Or am I extremely predictable? <laughs> 
I don't expected know, actually. Brackets. <laughs> Predictable story. I don't know. I, I don't know, actually. Maybe it would be just Lisa. You see, is what you get. Just yeah. Lisa. I like it. <laughs> well, that is true, actually, um, because I get a lot of people trying to join my personal page, and I think you get all the information on my fan page. Yeah. I, I'm not hidden. Like, when I do films for myself, I don't mm. bother with the makeup, I don't bother with. Yeah. Because that's not who I am. Yeah. What you see is literally just Lisa what, on a day out, maybe walking the dogs or in the house, just relaxing. Cleaning out the ducks, that's pretty <laughs> much me. The ducks, yeah, I don't. My ultimate joy in life is planting things in the greenhouse and with the dogs and the ducks, really. Oh, and my husband, obviously. <laughs> Andrew, don't sorry. Forget <laughs> So, what animal would you compare yourself to and why? Maybe a dog, because I'm friendly, I'm trustworthy, yeah. and I'm loyal. I'm not like, you did, you did loyal. I think I'd be, if I'm going to be like an actual dog, I think I'd be like a, a Labrador. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. if, if I, if like, you throw me a ball, I bring it back and I get loads of praise, I'll go and fetch yeah. it again. But if I don't get praise, I don't do it again. I ain't bringing that ball back, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not doing it. <laughs> And I'm quite stubborn. What would you say that's been your favourite artwork to work on? It does change because yeah. normally as soon as I've done an artwork, I have like about five seconds of like, yes! Yeah. And then it goes instantly and go, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. Oh, and I think, well, I've got to get to a point where it, you know, it's finished because sometimes I can just go into it and it looks no different yeah. a week later. Mm -hmm. And I'm just picking at it. So, and sometimes it can lose that life. So, yeah, I... I do pick out all my artwork and I dislike them after I've done them and I'm on to the next and try and make myself better each time. But I think one of my favourite ones um, to work on would be Absinthe. <gasps> yeah. Because I was asked to do fairies for quite... I, I'm asked to do lots of things quite a lot of um, time by obviously licensees and said, can you introduce fairies? I'm like, I don't know if fairies are really me. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, ah put it with like the alcohol and yeah. absinthe that's got a bit of a sort of a darker theme to it but mm -hmm. still kind of so making fairies quite cool yeah so um i thought that would be quite good and yeah i just enjoyed working on that i like mm -hmm. the vibe of it i love that one well i like rusty cauldron as well but rusty cauldron was mm -hmm. difficult yeah so that was quite stressful to do because it was really difficult on perspective i'm really crap at so I don't really. So I'm like, is that right? Is that right? It's really, yeah. I find them re really difficult. Yeah. But then it's quite fun when you when you manage it or you think you manage it, yeah. then it's quite a nice achievement to push yourself a little bit. Do you ever feel like sometimes you go too far with things and definitely. you think, oh, I, I need to bring myself out of it now. I can actually stop here. Yeah, definitely. Because you can go, you can go too far and ruin it, and you can look at something too much. So sometimes I'll leave it for a weekend. Yeah. After I think I finished it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll look at it on the Monday thing, actually it's finished. Or what I'll do is put it on social media, see the reaction, because sometimes you look at it so much and you suddenly think, oh, it's absolute rubbish. And you put it on and they go, oh, no, I really like it. You think, oh, no, it's OK, it's OK. Or yeah. maybe it needs a bit of tweaking. Yeah. One difficult thing with the artwork now is that one of my major licences is jigsaw puzzles. So I have mm -hmm. to put enough in it, uh, yeah. but still make it a nice painting. Yeah that would work on other products. Because you don't want it too busy mm -hmm. and you also want the focal point there. So you've got to get the focal point there. You still want your viewer to look at a certain point yeah. and be taken around the image in the same mm -hmm. way. But you also then, they want um, like corner to corner detail. Yeah. So you've got to have that in there, but still making the focal point. So that the artworks are harder to do these days, but in a way, are quite, I'm quite glad they've pushed me. Yeah. If you could look back at yourself, yeah, or look at someone now who's coming out of college and or going into college and doing wants a career in art, what would be your top advice for them? You've got to really, really love it because it's huge sacrifices. I mean, I've only just been making like a sort of decent wage, maybe only last seven years, maybe. You know, I, I was at a point where I'm like, I was boiling up carrots, leeks and potatoes to make soup to la last several days. And I was renting out rooms in my house to be able to make, make yeah. the mortgage payments. And I, I mean, I was on every overdraft was maxed out, yeah. credit cards were maxed out, you know, and I ne didn't know how I was going to... Every time I, my car went for an MOT, I had no idea how I was going to pay for it. Yeah. It's a lot of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And I did a full-time job, plus did my art, four yeah. 
four hours a night, every night. So it's huge sacrifices. You've got to love what you're doing yeah. to do it. And you've got to be like quite stubborn. Like for me, I think I've got a focus and I don't veer from that. No. I mean, you could be lucky. You might get a job um, illustrating in, in, um, in house straight away. Mm -hmm. If you are, that's fantastic, stick with it. Yeah. Or I would definitely um, try to learn some of the computer skills with art as well and definitely learn business because these days it's it's harder and harder and you really need to be able to do like your licensing yourself learn about contracts yeah. and yeah you've just got to be focused and you've got to be um thick-skinned really definitely and don't be don't be blinded by massive names that doesn't always that's not always good the massive names aren't normally the best payers no. That's, you know, if you, you'd see this big name and I think, oh, that, that's where I'm heading for. But yeah, and it, it's a lot of it's smoke and mirrors. Often the little tiny um, companies are the ones you can stick with and they're loyal to you and, exactly. you know, you can grow with them. So if you were stranded on a desert island, what three items would you take with you? A boat. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't need any more items. A compass and a packed lunch, because I could be quite <laughs> No one's ever put a boat, have they? I don't think so. Normally people are like, oh, matches. <laughs> yeah, survival. Boat. I'm off. <laughs> be like, bye bye. If you could have a superpower or a magical power, what do you think it would be and why? I'd like to be able to read people's minds. Because I do believe in a collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because um, me and my husband had this weird thing. I was watching a YouTube video. YouTube video before we yeah. went to bed and he dreamt what I was watching in the video, which is oh so goodness. bizarre. It's so bizarre. So he does believe I can read his mind anyway. Because <laughs> it freaks That's him out. That's always useful. <laughs> it just freaks him out. But it would be good because I think a lot of stress in life is caused by our body language not matching what's going on on our yeah. head. So that's why people like are antagonistic to one another yeah. because you feel stressed because, and you don't know why, and feel stressed with this person. It's because their body language doesn't match what they're saying, I think. Uh, so That's... they might be saying, I'm fine, but the body language is quite sort of cold and... Yeah, so if you can read their minds, also, you could like... Um, some people are acting a certain way because they're really, really hurt. And it would be nice if we could all reach, read each other's minds, it'd be a lot... So well, less that. wars. Well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, because then you'd know what the other was thinking, you'd be like, right. Let's sort it out then. Now. Mind you, everyone would have to read everyone's minds because if it was just me trying to do the whole thing, it's because I don't work. Like, Listen, you're feeling sad because of this. You right. don't like this. Right, I've you're done England. Now I'm off to Europe. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work on That's one person, isn't say. it? You'd have to just read everyone's minds. You'd mind, be a great diplomat. <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're creating your art as well, do you ever listen to sort of music or is it... Do you like silence? Then is there a favourite genre of music you listen to or...? No, this is quite bizarre and this is something me and my nan had. Yeah. I have to have films playing in the background yeah. or often I'll do a box set of something really inane like Nip Tuck or, yeah. you know, just something that you could, your mind can drift in and out of. Mm. But I can't listen to the radio talking. Mm. That really, really gets on my nerves and winds me up and I don't know why. Even though I'm not watching the TV, yeah. I know there is a picture. And my nan's exactly the same. She said, I can't bear listening to the radio. But I like listening to the telly, yeah. even though I'm not watching the picture. I went, I'm the same, I don't know why. But music, I start singing along and I lose train, yeah, I track of what song. I'm doing. I start singing, so that's... And also music can make me look, feel really, like, sombre. Yeah. And the stuff I like listening to is, like, things like Barbara Streisand and stuff like that. And you start... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so every piece of artwork now has a sad You're cat. You're on the carpet, like, oh no. Yeah, so. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, films for me.